Thank you very much. Um, so, hi, my name is Thilo Michael, and um, I'm going to present you uh, the paper extending the full band E model towards background noise, plus the packet loss, and conversational degradations. Um, and yeah, let me uh, begin um, with a quick motivation. So, um, in current um, voice over IP speech communication scenarios, um, uh, the major impairments in such communication networks are um, stem from the codec that is used, um, lost packets that are lost during transmission in the, uh, over the internet, um, delay uh, when a packet is not lost, maybe it takes a bit longer to arrive, so uh, there may be a transmission delay, and also ambient noise at the sending or receiving site. And there is a um, very well-known uh, par parametric model that is used um, to estimate the conversational quality of such networks, and it's called the E-model. Um, um, and while uh, the narrowband and wideband version have been uh, well established, uh, the full band version was recently published in 2019 by the ITUT in ITUT recommendation G107.2. Uh, um, and yeah, today I'm going to present you three approaches to extend this model regarding packet loss delay and ambient noise. And I'm on, um, also going to show you how we evaluated those extensions with two experiments. One experiment, one listening experiment for the ambient noise and one conversation experiment for the delay and packet loss. So let me begin uh, with a quick introduction into the full band E model. Uh, it um, is a model that predicts the quality of a conversation on the tr transmission rating scale R. And um, this is not directly predicting the MOS values, but it's kind of this different scale that can be later transformed into a MOS prediction. And it is uh, currently in the, at the maximum value of 148, which would be optimum quality. And then impairments are subtracted from this um, maximum rating. So uh, the more impairments they are, the less the um, transmission rating and the less the quality. So. Um, here is the, well, let me see if I can yeah, show you. Yeah, here's the formula, and um, I'm going to briefly explain the parts of that. The first uh, part is the basic signal-to-noise ratio, so currently just set to 148, and then we subtract the different degradations. Uh, the IS is the, uh, is the impairment factor representing all impairments that occur simultaneously to the voice signal, uh, for example, a side tone or quant quantizing noise, but currently in the current version, it is just set to zero, it's disregarded, so maybe this is something for future work to uh, include this IS factor. The next one is ID, which are impairments that occur due to delay. Um, then the last one is the effective IE, which is the um, uh, impairments that are caused by the codec and also packet loss. And yeah, as you can see, it's just like one big term and we subtract all the impairments and then we get a quality rating. Um, yeah, so first the extension for background noise. The, um, there are loads of formula, but I'm going to step through them and uh, trying to explain them very abstractly. So uh, basically in the current full band E model, we do not consider noise at all. The um, E model just says uh, the R0, the maximum, um, basic signal to noise ratio um, is just 148 on the transmission rating scale and uh, our extensions now includes um, uh, the noise and um, this these whole lots of formulas are uh, taken from the basically from the narrowband e model and then adapted to the full band scenarios or for the broader spectrum and um, so i'm not going to into detail too much but basically uh, we can see here this R0 is mainly dependent on this N0, which is the um, um, electrical power of the noise. So we are here in the electrical world, and so, um, yeah, we got all these noise sources, uh, the main ones being this N0S and N0R for the room noise at the sending side and the receiving side. But those are electrical power uh, noise uh, values, but when we measure the noise in a room, uh, for this, we measure it in dBA. This is the PS and PR is the measured room noise at the receiving and the sending side. And we need to convert it. That's why we need all those formulas. Basically, there are some 
different parameters to, to tweak here, like the D value or sentness loud rating or received loudness rating. So all those values you, you see in the, these formulas. But basically what we're doing is we're converting this um, um, A-weighted dB values from the room noise PR and PS into the equivalent electrical power. And then we combine all those noise sources into this N0 and then basically calculate this R0. So what we then get is, is no longer the straight 148 on the transmission rating scale, but less depending on how the noise sources are. So when I go into the um, listening experiment, we invited 25 participants and uh, to rate um, 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 speech material, and we had uh, different um, noise types, uh, especially pink noise, white noise, and babble noise. We had a noise-free condition and noise levels at 55, 65, and 75 dB. And we can see in those plots, uh, on the x-axis is the uh, room noise, and on the y-axis is the MOS value. And here for the figure A, we can see we set the room noise at the receiving side at 35 dB and vary the room noise at the sending side. And then we can see in green, it's maybe a bit hard to see, in green we see the um, bevel noise, in red and pink, we see the white and pink noise. And in the middle, even harder to see, is a black line, which is the average between all the noise sources. And we can see that the extension of the E model goes straight through these, this average. And uh, in figures B, C, and D, we can see the same thing. But here, we set the sending side room noise to 55 and 65 and 75 dBA and vary the room noise at the receiving side. And again, we can see that even though the quality is generally very low because we have high noise at the sending side, uh, we still match the average noise types. So let me come to the uh, two other extensions for the bursty packet loss and the delay. First, the packet loss. Um, there we have in the current full band E model basically three main parameters. One, one is this uh, equipment impairment factor, IE, which is basically a, a value denoting for each codec how, uh, how uh, much degradation has the codec on its own without any packet loss or anything. And then we have the PPL, which is the packet loss probability. So how likely is that the, that the packet is lost? And then when you have this BPL value, which is basically specific for each codec, the packet loss robustness factor. So how robust the codec is against packet loss. For example, if there's packet loss concealment and the codec, codec tries to um, conceal that there was a packet lost, uh, you get uh, um, different values here for the BPL and the quali quality is in general higher. And um, we uh, extended this for bursty packet loss because yeah, packet loss is not always uniformly distributed. So uh, we added these two values, the burst ratio and a burstiness robustness factor. The burst ratio is basically 1.0 for randomly distributed packet loss. And if the packet loss gets more clustered, the burst ratio is, is higher. And the burstiness robustness factor is just the robustness of the um, of the codec against burstiness, um, like the BPL. And here I have two examples. Uh, the first one is the current full band E model for uh, various packet loss rates. We have these nice colors for the burst ratios. And we can see the E model does not make any difference between those burst ratios. And with this new formula, we can see that it matches much closer uh, and can distinguish between different burst ratios. Um, now, before I come to the evaluation of that, uh, I add the extension for delay and interactivity. Um, there we have the current E model, also lots of formulas, I'm sorry, but uh, we have basically a, a value of 100 milliseconds. And if the transmission delay is below 100 milliseconds, it can usually not be detected by um, people in a, in a telephone conversation. So the impairment is set, set to zero. And um, otherwise, if it's larger, we have basically this logistic function um, based on the delay level. And our extension there is basically also uh, taken from the narrowband E model, inspired by the narrowband E model. Uh, we um, have this MT value, which is the minimal perceivable delay and the delay sensitivity ST. It's very small in this large formula. And what this does is for the MT, if we vary the minimal perceivable de delay, we basically shift the curve to the right. So on the x-axis is the delay. And we can see if we have a higher uh, minimal perceivable delay, we get zero for longer and then go up. And the, um, the same thing for the delay sensitivity. If the sensitivity is lower, we get a 
overall lower impairment factor. So what can we do with that? Um, we can differentiate between different conversation scenarios. Maybe you have a heated discussion on the telephone. There you have very high delay sensitivity because you immediately know if there is a delay on the line. But again, if we have the scenario that I'm talking all the time right now, you wouldn't notice a delay of maybe <laughs> very many seconds. So then we can distinguish between different conversation scenarios and uh, account for that in this model. So now for the evaluation, we did a conversation experiment with 27 participants um, where we invited two participants and put them in separate rooms and um, connected them through a telephone simulation, a full band telephone simulation. Uh, the speech was coded with linear PCM at 44.1 kilohertz. And um, we introduced degradations. So for the packet loss, we introduced 0, 15, and 30% packet loss at a burst, burst ratio of 4.0. Which, is, which are very high values because we wanted to yeah, uh, get a broad, uh, yeah, broad area of, of packet loss ranges. And for the delay, we had 0, 800 and 1,600 milliseconds of transmission delay. And we also uh, overall varied the types of conversations the participants had. So for one, they had the short conversation test, which is a standardized test where participants um, do everyday uh, telephone scenarios like booking a flight, booking a hotel, ordering a pizza, and so on. And we had the random number verification test, which is very high interactivity. So the participants exchange random number uh, rapidly. And so we had these different uh, yeah, interactivities there. So now for the results. Uh, Basically, I splitted the results completely into the short conversation test conversations and random number verification test conversations. So on the left side, you see low interactivity conversations. On, on the right side, you see high interactivity conversations. We see on the x-axis the delay in seconds. On the y-axis, uh, the MOS either predicted or measured in the experiment. The uh, different colors are different packet loss levels. So blue is 0% packet loss, orange is 15%, and green is 30% packet loss. And uh, the lines is the extension E model, so the, the, our new extensions for delay and packet loss. And the circles are uh, the experimental values. And if we just like, look at the blue lines, so at the 0% packet loss uh, scenarios, uh, we, we see that for the short conversation test, uh, this, the conversation quality is much less degraded than for the random number verification test. And we can also see that uh, the E model basically predicts the same thing. So for short conversation test, we have a much, uh, we have the speech is much less degraded than for the random number verification test here. Uh, then we have for the packet loss, we see that um, independent on the, of the ran, uh, type of conversation, we see that it matches for zero, uh, zero, zero millisecond delay, it matches, um, rather well the, the um, experimental values. But if we now look at um, combinations of packet loss and delay, we see it kind of breaks down. Um, the the E-model assumes the impairments are completely independent from each other and just subtract the impairment factors from the main value. And uh, thus, it comes to the conclusion that uh, the quality is much lower than it actually is. So maybe there needs to be some, some way of um, yeah, defining those interactivities. So for the conclusion, uh, I just presented the three extensions of the full band E model and the validations with the two subjective experiments. Um, as I said, in future work, we uh, will examine more full band and super wide band codecs. So as of right now, we have tested um, EVS and um, PCM. PCM is not really a codec used in, in everyday telephone uh, scenarios, so we would like to include more realistic codecs like Opus or uh, whatever is used nowadays. And we will carry out definitely more conversation tests with additional delay levels and packet loss rates and burst ratios, because like we have three distinct levels of delay and packet loss in these experiments. But yeah, we want to uh, get more fine granular uh, data on the different uh, levels that may occur in a telephone conversation. And we also plan on improving the prediction quality when we have a combination of those degradations. So maybe that uh, there are interactivity effects between different uh, degradations, and we can model this uh, with the e-model uh, better. So that's from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. And are there any questions? So. 
questions from the audience? Well, I have a question. Yes. Um, you uh, white pink and babble. Why not bring me some other ones from Noisex, like uh, restaurant and traffic conditions? Oh yeah, uh, we we thought about that. Uh, the the experiments were done during COVID time, so we had to cut down on experiment uh -huh. time. Uh, but yeah, th those are very uh, interesting results. We would also like to see, uh, yeah, because white and pink noise is very generic, not yeah. really realistic, and babble noise was the most realistic one. Right. But yeah. Um, if, if we do more tests in the future, we will definitely uh, use different noise sources as well. And what about reverberation? Do you want to try that or not? Uh, reverberation as an echo or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. In, in the environment. Uh, actually, another, another question. How close is the microphone? Uh, is it like a handheld uh, phone or is it a uh, distance? Yeah, there, there, there are... Um, there are different uh, scenarios and there are were in those formulas for the for the noise there were all those parameters that basically detect uh, so uh, the d value is how um, uh, how well the room noise is picked up by the microphone in comparison to the speech then we had like the listener side tone rating which is basically the what comes out of the earpiece into the mouthpiece when you have some kind of echo and those were all in those large formulas that I glanced over. So right. those are in there but there is also a real echo formula in the narrowband E model and we're planning on extending the full band version as well for uh, for real echo calculation. And one last point on slide seven you had a very you mentioned logistic function it was very complicated is that part of the uh, standard? Yes that okay. was part of the the okay. standard yep. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay. If there are no questions from the audience, I also have one. But here's your opportunity to raise your hand if you have a question. All right. So uh, I missed uh, how you go from the R value to the MOS in your. Um, yeah, I, I really didn't explain it. So there is um, there is a mapping function defined in the in the standard in the recommendation. Um, yeah, and it's basically also I think a logistic uh, mapping between those R values and MOS values. And the MOS ranges are then from 1 to 4.5. 4.5 being the maximum and 1 is the minimum. So, but, but it's just a um, one-to-one one mapping? One-to-one one mapping, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it's the same mapping for whatever uh, type of, uh, I mean, delay versus uh, noise is quite different. But exactly. But the, exactly the what you're trying idea, to capture in the R value. Yeah, right. But the, the idea is really that we, um, that this, the, all those formulas bring it to the same transmission um, rating scale, yeah. and in those scales they are kind of interchangeable. And and yeah, we have like the the value should be the same when you have like a value for delay and a value for packet loss. Um, kind of it should degrade the overall quality, conversation quality, the same. That is, yeah. Do you plan on looking into uh, uh, what the um, echo cancelers do? I mean, uh, we, we've been working. Uh, remotely so much over yeah, the last yeah, year right. and you notice how uh, bad the effect can be over yes uh, uh, so echo canceller? yeah echo is part uh, in principle part of the delay formula and is added into there and is the next thing on on our list after after like those three extensions yeah yeah and then if, okay we still have one a minute okay uh, individual differences I mean these are means over populations but yes uh, and especially so in in subjective uh, in listening quality you can average over loads and loads of, of um, yeah of different um, opinions but here we have like conversations and there are always two people in the one conversation that can be widely different uh, between participants but then again yeah we, we currently not are not having a, a better way to to quantify it than just doing a mean opinion but uh, there's also some research I've been doing for simulating conversations and then getting a broader range of, of opinions on on the same uh, type of, of uh, degradation okay I think we have to stop here thank okay. you very much thank you very much for the questions